Melissa, uh, about <laughs> what you said it. about equations is fascinating. So if there are th those difficulties, have you guys ever thought of something else to replace the equations as a way to illustrate, as a way to diagram, as a way even to Yeah, talk? the Feynman diagrams are, were just that. Yeah. But they don't completely do it. Um, well, there's, I mean, equations are good. You just can't read them aloud. That's what I mean. <laughs> you have to sort of just sit and bang your head against them. Um, so is it just like coming up with a bunch of adjectives or, or what? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer. It's a good question. But I'm just, I've just begun reading them aloud. And maybe it'll <laughs> will all change. <laughs> maybe I'll start to understand them. Which is quite also possible. I don't know if there's any scientists in the room. That, I'm the only one <laughs> who doesn't read them aloud. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe they could be music texts. <laughs> but music, you come up, you, you make it. When, when you read your equations, do they have rhythm? Uh, I, I, just, I think just F equals MA. That has a kind of. But when you yeah. when you read yeah, them, there was they were. Yeah, like, I was what, trying. You had the music in your head. I had his music in you my were, head. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe you want to talk with Nancy Kenwasher and get her to scan your brain. I do. I want her to. I totally yeah. totally want her to scan my brain. Probably afraid of what you find. I see them. <laughs> yeah. I just want to say something ahead of time. I'm an experimentalist, so there's a whole class of people who are different than me called theorists, and I'm, I can't speak for them. And I don't really like them. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, 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 so, totally kidding. Um, I don't know. It's interesting. I, I haven't thought about it enough, but as you're writing equations, you sort of are thinking more about what's on top and what's on bottom and what that means. Like, you're thinking things like if I increase the bottom, what happens to the thing? Or if I decrease the top? You're, it's a kind of, I don't really, I, I'll come back in a year with the answer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You said something very interesting about the struggle to put space and time together. You know, and sometimes you think about space and sometimes you think about time. And it's, in a way, that, that question speaks to what you both do. But I'm wondering if you could elaborate a little bit more about that in terms of the work that you do. And maybe Mark can talk about what that's like for him putting space and time together. Could Mark talk first? <laughs> and then I'll riff off of Mark. Well, they, um, I read a book that said in the medieval, it, that music notation was the first graph. It was the first time there was ever a time axis and then a spatial axis, which is the pitch. So that's the bread and butter of music. Um, and, and in notated music, that is doing a, a great big piece like this song cycle or other pieces, you've, it's done over time. And so not only do I navigate what happens, what the, what the notes and harmonies are, but I also change as my brain changes as I spend time with this for, for the, the big demanding pieces. So, so, it's, uh, um, so, that's, so I'm thinking about all, that all the time. That was really good. <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. That's... Yeah. Um, I just have a big problem with space time because it, you know, it curves and everything. And sometimes it curves in ways that I, I don't, I'm not very good at thinking about. Um, well, that's really good. I mean, in curved space time, I have very crazy <laughs> rhythms that, that just, nothing is set rhythmically. And so that's like curvature. Uh, do you ever had that feeling where your brain is actually growing, <laughs> growing as you speak? Yeah. I, I think I, yeah, I think I have to come back next year again for 
the question is, what's my problem with space time? Um, We're going to just, um, maybe just two more. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so I, I have this question for Mark. And I mean, I know that you obviously have also know a lot about mathematics. So, I mean, in terms, like, you have such a logical and very systematic approach, like, the, you know, the ladder and, and um, I'm just wondering if you could speak to that a little bit. I'm also curious um, if you maybe might talk a little bit about other compositions you've been working on or that you know. Oh, sure. Um, well, I guess the first part is, is being mathematical and logical, and that's certainly part of this, um, but, it's, um, but it's, it, it's just a tool, and if I didn't have to think about it, I wouldn't. Um, I was thinking about the, the, the Cambridge and MIT's late lamented Tom Magliozzi when he was running for president in the 90s, his campaign slogan was unencumbered by the thought process. <laughs> and, that's how I um, operate. And what's wonderful about that is that doesn't mean that you get people who are in the news now. What, what it means is that it, it means that there is a thought process, but that you're not encumbered by it. So I'm, so I'm looking to jettison it. Like once I had that music ladder, once it worked, fine, the end. I, I don't really care about the idea of going into it. But the thought process applies both to the composer, to the performers, and to the listener. And, and then the, the being unencumbered is, is a goal in all three of those functions. That's, that's like being a free range chicken? Yeah. Yes. 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 I, I realized that I wanted to say it's a free range chicken woman. Because you know, women often feel that they can't think um, freely. I don't know why that is. Do you, in the old days. <laughs> So this I can't help you. <laughs> well, you, you can help me, actually. <laughs> you can play the music, and then I can, I can think. Yeah. Well, the, um, um, the question also asked, talked about uh, current compositions. And there's, there's a brand new composition finished um, days ago for violin and viola. And it's a duo. And it's, um, it's here. It's there. But you know. I, Play it during the party, and um, the. Um, I, I just got an idea. Well, go ahead. So, <laughs> but but that that is that is uh, germane to to the, you know to the vacuum and, and nothingness. Um, um, I, I like to think about pieces that aren't there, like a pieceless piece. What that means, I I think about writing things that aren't there, and it's not that there aren't notes and instruments playing them, but the idea of it is, and so, so, that, so that's brand new, and it basically doesn't have themes. It has a musical idea, but it's, it's very buried, so that's, that's, a, that's a new piece. So I would like to take this moment and um, thank everyone for coming, and thank Melissa and Mark for just marvelous <laughs>